together now. And we're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. Sing it again. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We've got life and skin and bone. And we all share the same thing. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We've got dark skin. We've got straight hair. And curly too. Let me hear you. You continue doing your work, and when I get back, I'll put in the spices, and we'll cook dinner, and we'll have a wonderful meal. But Anansi, she said, whatever you do, don't go and touch those beans. They're very hot, and you could burn yourself. What did I say, Anansi? He said, I won't he touch those beans. He standing right in front of that pot of beans. Well, she said, don't touch the beans. It won't happen. Heard if I smell them, I took the top off. Oh, Anansi loved beans. He said, it won't hurt if I just take a taste. Grandma doesn't have to know. Sitting right there was her wooden spoon, and it looked kind of lonely, so Anansi picked it up. And he took a taste. He took it out of the bowl. He blew on it. Maybe just one more. Maybe another. I've had three. A fourth one's not going to make any difference. Well, Anansi got to thinking he'd like some more of that. He wanted it to cool faster, so he took off his hat and he put the beans in the hat. Well, a moment later, there was some yelling out in the field. And some neighbors were yelling, Get out of here, you nasty birds! Get out of here! Get away from Grandma's beans! Get away from here! Well, the birds suddenly flew in the kitchen window where Anansi was, and the neighbors started pounding on the door. They said, Anansi, let us in! Let us get those birds! They're eating Grandma's beans! Well, there was Anansi, all those people at the door, and Anansi had those beans in his hat. You think he wanted them to see him with the beans in his hat? No. Hide him. Where do you think he could hide him? Put it on his head. Put it on. That's exactly what Anansi did. He grabbed those beans, he put them on his head. Ew. But you know, those beans had not had a chance to cool yet. <gasps> he felt those beans on his head. Imagine that. All those hot beans. And then he opened the door, and the neighbor's standing there like this. I said, Anansi, what's wrong? He said, nothing's wrong. You can leave now. You can leave now. I said, but Anansi, you look like you're in pain. Did those birds hurt you? He said, no, no. He said, I'm fine. You can go now. You can go now. Well, Anansi was starting to sweat. The sweat was pouring down his face. He was starting to cry from the heat. They said, Anansi, no, we need to help you. We're your friends, Anansi. Let us help you. Anansi just wanted them to leave. They wouldn't leave. He said, no, it's all right, it's all right, they're fine, I'm fine, you can leave now. His voice was getting higher and higher. They said, Anansi, let us help you. Anansi was going like this, and he grabbed his hat and he started to move it around, so, to move the beans around. They said, Anansi, what are you doing? He said, it's a dance, it's a dance. He said, what kind of dance? He said, it's a hat shaking dance, it's a hat shaking dance. They said, Anansi, that's a wonderful dance. Let us do it with you. So they all got up and they started doing the hat shaking dance. Go ahead, do it with me. And they started shaking that hat every now and then they go, Woo! So this song is about somebody who goes to La Pulga, the flea market, and he buys a bunch of different instruments. And the fun of it is that you get to pretend you're playing those different instruments. So this is in Spanish, but it's very, very simple. And I know that you guys can learn it. The, the song says, En la Pulga de San Jose. Can you say that? En la Pulga de San Jose. Yo compré una guitarra. Yo compré una guitarra. That means I bought a guitar. Okay? And then it says, Buy you usted, buy you usted. Say that. Buy you usted, buy you usted. Which means you go to 
you go to a la pulga de San Jose to the San Jose flea market. En la pulga de San Jose, yo compré una guitarra. Try that with me. En la pulga de San Jose, yo compré una guitarra. Okay, here's your guitar. Hold up the neck with one hand, strum with the other. Ta da ta da ta da, la guitarra. Great. Buy you stead, buy you stead, a la pulga de San Jose. You go to, you go to, to la pulga de San Jose. That's it. En la pulga de San Jose, yo compré un tun tun, el tambor or drum. Tun tun, el tun tun. Lon, lon, violon. Lin, lin, violin. Nete, 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 clarinete. Ta da ta da ta da, la guitarra. Va usted, va usted a la pulga de San Jose. Va usted, va usted a la pulga de San Jose. Very good. Nasruddin Hoja is the person this story is about and probably comes from, and he lived in the 1200s. He was a teacher, Hoja means teacher, and sometimes he taught very seriously and sometimes he's very foolish in the stories. And in this story, he's a little bit of each. The story says that one time the Mukhtar, who was a very rich and important man, in the Hoja's village had a banquet and he invited the Hoja to it. Now the Hoja was considered a wise man and people loved to ask him questions. And of course they served lots of good food at a banquet. So all day long as the Hoja was working in his garden, he was thinking eagerly ahead of the, of the evening coming. He was thinking of those trays of delicious food. He was thinking of people asking him interesting questions, and he would tell them the answers, or give them his opinion at least. He was thinking so hard about these things that he wasn't paying attention to the time. And what happened was that suddenly he saw that the sun was perched on the horizon. And there wasn't time enough to go home and change his clothes and to take a shower. Or he would be late and he felt like that would be very impolite. So he thought about it and he thought, well, I'll have to just go in my work clothes. So he went over to the banquet in his work clothes. But when he came in, the, the Mukhtar barely noticed him. He kind of saw him out of the, the side of his eye and he just kind of motioned back to a long table in the corner and the servants took him back there. They seated him way in the corner at the end of the table so that when the trays of food were brought, there was nothing left at the end of it. And so there was the Hoja sitting there, hungry after a long day in the garden, and hurt because, you know, the Mukhtar was his friend as well as an important man in the village, and the Hoja, as I told you, was considered a very wise man. There he was in the corner. Well, after a while, the Hoja stood up and he walked out of the banquet hall and he went home. When he got home, he took a bath and he put on his most elegant clothes. He put on a flowing shirt and billowy pants. He put on a beautiful white turban and on top of it all his new coat. And then he went back to the banquet. Well, this time, when he got to the banquet, the Mukhtar rose to meet him. And the servant took him and seated him right there beside the Mukhtar in the place of honor. The servants brought him tray after tray of delicious food. And he would take the foods and people were asking him questions. But as he took the food, he didn't eat it. He started stuffing it into the pockets of his coat. And when he ran out of room, in the pockets, he started rubbing it into his shirt. He was rubbing it all over his shirt, and the kids thought it was funny, you know. Here he was, the wise man in town, he was rubbing food in his shirt. But the Mukhtar was kind of embarrassed, and he watched him for a while, and finally he said, Hoja, he said, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? No, 
monk said the whole chat. I haven't lost my mind. I'm just trying to teach you a little lesson. You see, when I came here earlier dressed in my work clothes, you barely acknowledged me and you seated me in a corner, way back in the corner of the hall, where there was no food left for me and really no one to talk to. When I came back dressed in these elegant clothes, you treated me as the guest of honor. Well, I haven't changed. I'm the same person who came here before. It's only my clothes that have changed. So, it must be my clothes that you're honoring. Out of respect, I'm feeding them first. <laughs> Eat my clothes, he said. You are the guest of honor. And with that, he stood up. what's the lesson of that and they always get it they always get it it's not what's on the outside it's not the hijab it's not the old torn pants it's what's on the inside it's what's on the inside well somos el barco means we are the boat and the words to the chorus are somos el barco try that somos el barco somos el mar Somos el mar, we are the sea. Yo navego en ti, yo navego en ti, I sail in you, tu navegas en mí, you sail in me. And we sing it in Spanish and then uh, in English. Here's the door. Yeah.